Good evening and welcome to Orient Live here in the E10 studio. It's a massive Tuesday night fixture for Matty Howell to play in Orient this evening as we face Colchester United in a rainy East Essex. And I'm delighted to be joined by two absolute legends of the game, Brendan Pitcher and Jabbo Abire. And Jabbo, starting with you, if it's, a, it's a former club of yours again, we seem to play him every week. Um, <laughs> I, know, I know which team you're always supporting, but it is a tough game. Another tough game, but probably one of the only other teams in the division whose form is similar to Orient, mm. and it, it feels like a massive must-win. Yeah, well, it's, it's a game definitely neither team can does or well, neither team wants to lose, but it's a, it's a massive opportunity to go and um, you know put a positive performance in, and hopefully we'll come away with three points. Um, and Brendan, we'll, we'll come on to the starting lineup in a second, but obviously following on from. From Saturday's disappointing defeat against Carlisle, they were a similar team that were below us in the table and we didn't manage to, to take anything away from that game. Do you, do you hope maybe there's a little bit less pressure on Matty Harrell today playing away from home and, and hopefully, as, as Jabbo said on Saturday, the shackles might come off that little bit more tonight after a bit more time on the training ground? Yeah, I think you could say that. I think Matty will be looking for a reaction because Saturday... You can make excuses. We had 10 men for a lot of the game, but still it, it, losing to a side below us in the form we're in is not ideal at the minute. And the, this game and the one on Saturday, are both against relegation contenders. And, and, and they're, for me, probably the biggest games we've had since the National League season, I think they're massive for the long-term future of this club. And, and like, like I said, we need a reaction tonight. We need the, the players to put in a performance to kind of steer us away from that relegation danger. And it obviously sets up a massive, massive march. Uh, it's the first of every... Tuesday night this month's been filled with an away game. And then we've obviously got fellow relegation battlers, Stevenage on Saturday. It's This is setting us up for quite a big month. Yeah, absolutely. Look, the, the, the players, it, you, you can't keep on losing. At some point, you're going to get a bit of luck. We're not getting hammered by teams. We're, we're still losing by the odd goal. And it, it, obviously, it's not good enough. But you, you're going to get a bit of luck your way eventually. Something's going to go in off, off someone's backside or something. And, and we're going to nick a win. And hopefully, tonight is the night. And, and the confidence will return. And then it, everything can change from there. And we can build from there and, and move away from this relegation danger. Well, as Brendan said, of course, Matty Harold will be looking for a big reaction from his O's side tonight. And let's take a look to see what side he's opted for in his second game as interim manager. So, as always, steadfast in between the sticks for Leighton Orient. Number 22, Lawrence Figaro. Number 3, Connor Wood. Number 6, Adam Thompson. Number 9, Harry Smith. 14, Otis Khan. 18, and we're in the armband, Darren Prattley. Number 19, Omar Beckles. 20, Ruel Soterio. Number 21, Matt Young. 34, Ethan Coleman, and finally number 35, George Ray, and on the bench for Leighton Orient this evening, Rhys Byrne. Paul Smith returns after his collapsed lung. Dan, Muff, uh, Dan Moss, sorry, Shad Oji, uh, Hector Kiprianu, uh, Zek Obiero, and Jeff Tanga are the two uh, youngsters to come in to the side. Apologies. <laughs> <laughs> right, so so it is the two changes, Brendan. Um, Archibald obviously suspended uh, following Saturday, and um, and and obviously Hector Capriani dropped to the bench for Matt Young. What, what what do you make of the changes that that he's opted for? <laughs> Yeah, I think the big one is Otis Khan today. I think he, he's mostly played mo a lot of his football at right back, and and we've seen glimpses of, glimpses of what he can do going forward. And, and I think today he's playing further forward today, and, and can give us that creative spark with Theo Archibald out. And, and Jabbo, the O's will be hoping for a goal big time, and it's it's it, we struggled on Saturday to see where maybe that will come from. We've got Royal Satiri and Harry Smith mm. up top. Where, where, where do you, where do you, I don't know what's going on this evening. Um, where, where do you think the goals could go? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I do think that um, the goals will come hopefully from Khan. Who will produce? Who will produce some good quality? <coughs> Just Sorry. Um, produce some good balls from the ring. <laughs> I don't know what has happened here. Um, I'm, I do apologise. Let's let's take a look at Ruel Soterio because he's someone that we're going to have to to hope can pull something out and, and magic something up, as we know he can do, as as we've seen in the past, Brendan. And he's he's starting this afternoon, as or this evening, even, and and hopefully he can refine some form and 
and, and try and get some some much needed magic that's needed for the O's. Yeah, the the thing about Morel was when he came through, he he was absolutely fearless in what he did. He, he, he look as we're seeing from the clips here, he would drive at defenses, he'd get a shot away, and 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 that's probably come out of his game a little bit recently. He's been. Um, Kind of hampered like everyone has in this team by a by a lack of confidence, but he's the one player in this team that can create something out of nothing and, and give us a spark, give us a bit of creativity. It's it's going to be tough because obviously with Matty Harold and Brian Starr, they haven't had a lot of time on the training ground. They're not going to have a set style of play, so you're almost looking for individual quality out there to provide that creative spark. And I think for me, Real Soterio is one of those players that can do that. I think getting the ball as, as, as often as possible, like we'll see here, getting one-on-one -on -one with a defender. He can take on he can take on his defender. He can produce a moment of magic, and that's perhaps where we can have our best chance of, of going forward today and creating something. Well, listen, hopefully the attacking players can put in a better performance than we have so far. Um, but looking at Otis Garnon, as I think we were about to talk about mm. Jabbo, mm. he's, he's someone as well like Ruel who who we've seen glimpses of maybe being able to get the ball at his feet, getting a ball in the box. And him playing further up the field, mm. hopefully might, as you liked on, on Sound Saturday, might release them shackles. Yeah, hopefully so. I mean, <clears throat> he, he's, he's positive in his play. And I noticed that on Saturday, he, he was trying his hardest to get further further forward. So now he's playing as a on the right side. Hopefully you get those balls in and get that good service to um, Smith, you know. But I'd like to see him just cross it a little bit earlier when he's on the attack. And because as a striker, you're watching the wing and you're thinking, go on, go on now. And when they just take that extra touch and they just, you know, that moment's gone. So hopefully today he'd be very positive, you know. But I think a lot of this, um, the supply line will be coming from that side from Khan. Mm. And, uh, I feel like we speak about it every week, though, mm. Jabba. We, we speak about the lack of goals. And mm. as, as a striker yourself, talk about how the mentality is for a striker that hasn't scored for a while. Mm. We can give them all the service in the world, but it, it, it's feeling like that goal is, is is really hard to come by at the moment. What, yeah. where, where, where'd you go? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, you just got to keep putting yourself in those areas, you know, because sometimes if you're going, to, if you're in a drought, and you know, players are just shying away from getting into those areas where the balls is going to be expectedly to go into those areas. So, if you start shying away, you're never going to score. So you sometimes be man enough to, you know. I'm in that area, okay, I might not get the connection I want to get, but at least I'm getting in there. Because if you're not in there, you're never going to score. Then, like, like you're saying, you get a bit of luck, you get in that area, hits your kneecap, it goes in the top corner, and it all, all's forgotten. So as long as he keeps turning up and showing up in those areas, I'm sure he'll get the goal sooner or later. And it's looking like, Brendan, that Harry Smith will be playing almost as like kind of the lone target man tonight, um, up top on his own with Ruel and Khan out in the wide areas. It's obviously a, a game style that... Harold himself will be quite familiar with um, and and Smith is someone that hopefully as, as Jabo says if one goes off his knee and, and off his bum or whatever you just you just hope that maybe he can refine that score in form yeah he he looks very much I mean a lot of strikers are but he looks very much to me like a confidence player like when 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 he was fit and firing and, and, and he was firing all cylinders that goal against Bradford I remember he had that he he's took a shot from nowhere and it's these kind of things that he perhaps isn't trying at the minute because he, he's low on confidence and he's one of those players where if he has a good start to the game I think he can really kind of go on and and and, and play well but if, if things don't go right from in the first 10 minutes or so it, it can affect his confidence a little bit and just picking up on that then because we, we've seen in the, in the last few games Ruel Sotiriu had a, a few opportunities to score against Bristol Rovers in the first half and I think everyone in the stadium was just begging him to take that early shot and he just didn't we've, we see Otis Khan maybe take an extra touch how do you turn that around how do you get confidence into those players and get them to maybe not take that extra touch or hit it first time well, I think it definitely, at the start of the game, it comes from the coaches maybe just reminding players how good you, you really are, that you, you, you're you here for a reason, you know what I mean? And I think sometimes showing previous clips from previous games early on in the season, um, you know, can give you that boost. But ultimately, when, I think sometimes where players go wrong is that you cut, you try and complicate things. You take You just try to make everything that much more sturdier before you think about doing something. And when you're at your best, you just do it. So when you are kind of overthinking, the chance or the opportunity goes, and that's that's what happens when you lose your confidence. So I think they just have to get back to doing what they know they're good at, doing it simple, 
And then the first thing they do, they do it well, then they grow into the game. All of a sudden, they'll be just doing things off the cuff quickly without thought. But when you're lacking that confidence, you just think of that little bit too much. And, and when we've got games coming as thick and fast as they are, obviously mm. Saturday and, and, and now today, there probably hasn't been tons of time on the, on, on the training ground for mm. them. So is it a case of just trying to rediscover that on the pitch? How, how does it work? I mean, <clears throat> sometimes I think... Um, you kind of enjoy having the games coming thick and fast because you can put the previous game to bed. You're like, okay, we didn't do well. Right, we've got 15 games, 14 games to go. Right, next game, we're on it. And then you you kind of just go in there with like fresh mind, fresh spirit. And obviously now with the um, Matt Harold being in charge to give the players that lift, that boost, hopefully the shackles will be off today a bit more and they'll get that um, the feeling and the spark back today. Mm. And the midfield will the midfield will be key to that, Brendan. And and there is the one change with Matt Young coming in alongside Prattley and Coleman. But how how do you think they'll operate in a, in a in a three or or even with Ruo and Khan included in that? Yeah, I think it will be kind of Prattley and Coleman being the two holders almost, and then with um, Matt Young slightly more advanced in the number ten role. I think that's a role that suits Matt. I think he had his best game in the orange shirt against Colchester when he was playing out on that left hand side. I thought he was the only one kind of creating anything in that match mm. for us. And if he can continue that today then it's going to be a big night for him and it's a it's a big night for him anyway he's not had a lot of starts for Orient and to start in such a crucial game like tonight in such a pivotal role where we are lacking goals at the minute and we're lacking creativity it's, it's a big ask of him but one I, I think he can do if he replicates the kind of performance he put in against Colchester last time and what's potentially gone under the radar with him where we haven't been winning games but what, watching the games as we do we we see the delivery that he's got from corners. He, he, he can get a ball in with real intent. And, and is that something you'd maybe like to see even more of him? As Jabba says, unleash the shackles. Just tell him to, to, to try and create something. Yeah, absolutely. I think when you're, when you're low on confidence, it is natural to kind of just try the simple pass and, uh, and keep things ticking over. But when we're, we're so devoid of creativity at the minute, we, we, we don't score many goals to try and kind of get a spark, get something going. I, I, if I was Matt Harrell, I'd be saying, it, try something. If, if it's a shot from 25 yards, you think it's on, do it. If it's a risky pass that might go out of play, then have a go because at the minute, we, we just need something to spark us into life to get that goal and, and, and to help us on to, to break this run of form. Hopefully, Matty Harold will have the boys firing on a few more cylinders this evening. And we did catch up with him at the training ground early this week ahead of tonight's game. Matt, it was defeat on, on Saturday, but no doubt a big learning curve from yourself. What did you take from that game? Yeah, ultimately, really disappointing with the result. I think um, there was a quite a positive feeling going into the game, um, but it doesn't always go to plan, does it? So, yeah, it was um, it was disappointing, but yeah, learnt loads, enjoyed parts of the experience. Obviously, the main part I didn't enjoy because we didn't come home and, and everyone didn't have that euphoria of a win or, 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 um, or at least something from the game. Um, but we've debriefed it today. There's uh, there's some good things about it, and there's also some things to work on. And uh, we've made that really clear to the players. Um, and we're we're just ready now for tomorrow. Uh, fully focused on that. Um, yeah. Obviously, going into this game, coaches, we know a lot about them, having played them very recently, and no doubt there's a feeling that we kind of owe them on. Yeah, definitely. I actually thought we'd done okay on the day. They scored um, from one of our set plays. We had. Um, Drizzy had a header saved and they went up the other end and scored and then they managed to keep us out. So, um, yeah, we know about them. We've got, we obviously analyse all games, but we um, we first off just got to see we've got a few um, a few bodies kind of that we've got some walking wounded and everything. We're going to have to evaluate them and physically, see how everyone is. But um, yeah, we'll be ready for tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. And then just finally, then there would be a noisy contingent tomorrow from from Nate Norrie making a trip in, in the away end and. I know you and the lads will be desperate to send them home with a smile on their face. Yeah, desperate, to be honest. I mean, um, they stayed with us on the weekend and I get it in tough circumstances. You know, we were it was so much um, positivity going into it. And then five minutes into the game, that had all, all gone in a way. And, and I get it. Um, so, yeah, they stayed with us right to the end, even when we were kind of um, bombarding their box. I know they had a few breakaways, but we've had um, headers off the line and things like that. So... The crowd stayed with us and we appreciate that and it will be great to see them there again tomorrow and really doing everything in our power to um, send them home happy. Hopefully Matty can pick up the first three points in his interim spell this evening and it is of course Colchester United who stand in his way and they were the last team, uh, or Leighton Orient were the last team that Colchester actually beat but let's take a look and see at the starting eleven that they've opted for this evening. 
So in goal for the U's is number 29, Shamal George. Number four, and wearing the armband, Luke Chambers. Seven, Luke Hannant. Number eight, Cole Scoos. Number 10, Alan Judge. 11, Freddie Sears. 12, Awura Edwards. Number 14, Noah Chilvers. Number 15, Tom Dallison. 17, Miles Kenlock. And number 27, Cameron Cox. And on the bench for Colchester this evening, Hornby, Smith, Andrews, Chamedu, Akinde, Hughes, and Wright. Um, so we, we obviously remember them as we only really played them a few weeks ago, Jabbo, but what do you expect from, from Colchester themselves? They're, they're in some poor form, not as bad form as us, but but still a team that, that could be there for the taking. Yeah, def <clears throat> definitely. I mean, they've lined up with a bit of experience there, um, a bit of protection with Scoose <clears throat> shielding the back four, but they've got players that can produce a bit of magic in Alan Judge and Freddie Sears, so um, I think they're going to be cagey a little bit. I think they're going to set up not wanting to lose the game at all. Um, I think both teams are going to go in intention to win, but I think it's just going to be a bit of a cagey affair. And I think it's one win in eight, Brendan, and that win being against us here at, here in E10. Um, how, how have they been playing? What, what, what do you expect from them this evening? Uh, I think they're going to be fairly, fairly direct, fairly, like Jabba says, it's going to be a cagey game. I think they're going to be defence first. I think... The, it, it's, a, it's a big one tonight, and I think we've got it ourselves. We've got to kind of put put the put their crowd on their back early. I think they haven't won a home game since the twenty third of November, so their home form is, is, is horrific. And, and I think if we can kind of get 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 on there early, get make a fast start, and and, and kind of don't let their fans create an atmosphere, then, then I think that's the way you go about kind of settling this game down and, and hopefully picking up the three points. And Brendan said they haven't won at home since the 23rd of November. Mm. I think it was the 18th of September that Leighton Orient last won away. Mm. So on paper, this one's a draw tonight, Chabo. Oh, so it's going to be cagey, but something, something's got to give today. And, um, you know, Orient will hopefully be trying to, you know, <clears throat> get rid of that sort of stat of not winning away from home and then Colchester will be looking to win a home game. So, you know, something's got to give, but I think it'd be a cagey affair for sure. And he obviously scored the goal against us last time, mm. Brendan, but Freddie Sears is a striker. He's their top scorer and, and he's one that we'll have to be looking out for this evening. Yeah, absolutely. He's got good pedigree like a lot of this Colchester side. He was in that Ipswich side that made the playoffs under Mick McCarthy. So he, he, he's got good pedigree. He's played at a higher level and he's probably been their star man so far this term. He scored this goal against us that, that was the winner. But he's got 10 goals and three assists so far this season, which for a side that are, that are battling relegation is, is, is pretty good going. He's, he's, he's a good finisher. He's lively he'll, he'll run his socks off he'll try and get in the channels he offers something a bit different to john akinde who he replaced on saturday and scored off the bench so i think <clears throat> it'll be it'll be a tough night for for omar beckles and george ray because he, he, he's not going to kind of play with his back to goal and try and hold the ball up perhaps like, like i said like someone like john akinde which would probably suit omar beckles and george ray instead he's probably going to look to run in behind like we see from this clip and and get shots away and as we're seeing here he, he's deadly in front of goal he's a really good finisher and that probably comes from his pedigree higher up because we all know he came through west ham and, uh, and was a premier league player at one point and looking at their last out and against us mm. and, and the, the goal that they scored jabbo mm. we, we've opted for probably a more defensive um, back four today with, with, with Adam Thompson slipping in at right back and having Otis Khan further up. Do you think that's a, a tactical decision from, from Matty and the boys that are coming up against this side? And, and obviously we, it's been a while since we've kept a clean sheet so maybe is that into the, to their thinking just desperate not to concede? I, I, I think so. I think after, especially after Saturday's game you know maybe shoring up the spaces between the defence and the, and the midfield creating that drop it just, just you know um, solidified in that space so that likes of Freddie Sears when they drop into those little pockets um, the midfielder could be back tackling a bit so and then keeping the defence tight so they're not getting overrun or spread down the channels I think it's a, I think it's a good um, tactic by Matty there and how, how big could a clean sheet be tonight we, we do seem to be on the slide lost the God knows how last <laughs> many and you know clean sheets no defeats it's just something to build on it's you, you, you've got to start somewhere would you almost take a draw tonight yeah, I think, <coughs> I mean, away from home against um, a f fellow strugglers as well, um, <clears throat> a draw and then looking for a positive result at the weekend won't be a bad thing. But I just think just to get some rhythm, just get some points, get a good performance on the board, I think it would just do massive for the players' confidence right now. And where would you say the weaknesses are in that Colchester side that, 
that looking at the Orient team tonight can can go out there and try and have some joy. Yeah, like Jabbo and myself have alluded to, they're, they're an experienced side, but that also means they're fairly old. So <laughs> um, they're perhaps lacking in pace in some areas. I think the defence is, is, is fairly slow and that's where people like Otis Khan and, and, and Rul Soteria will come into play because if you can stretch their defence and, and, and make them work and try and beat them for pace, and I think that's perhaps where you can find a bit of joy tonight. And, of course, Orient did last win at the Job Serve Stadium back in 2016, thanks to Jay Simpson Masterclass. And let's remind ourselves of how the fixture played out on that evening. Some goals of that calibre would be nice, or I suppose any goals at all would be quite nice as well. But Jabbo, I, I remember watching you play in the same fixture at the same stadium mm. and scoring against us, unfortunately. But we, we've had some joy there in the past and, yeah. you know, just, it could potentially help. Or, or what, what way do you think it will go in, I mean, in this sense? I mean, you do get grounds, funny enough, that, you know, you always seem to pick up results at. So, you know, I remember playing against Orient a couple of times and you've come out worthy winners on the day, so... Potentially, it could be a lucky ground for us today, so hopefully we'll get the result. <laughs> it, it, you would expect a fair few fans to, to be travelling. It is at that, that mm. short trip, as we mm. all know. Um, Colchester, they'll be well up for it. It's something of a derby. It's mm. probably one of our closest teams in League Two. Do you hope maybe that energy in the stadium might add that intensity to the game, especially with all the points that Arthur play might make it a little bit more mm. intense? Mm. Well, yeah, it's, it's a big game. There's no way... Another way to say it is, is a big game, and I think the um, the fans are going to know that, and they're going to be they're going to be on it. They're going to be trying to encourage their teams because they're lacking a bit of confidence. So I think the crowd are going to play a pivotal point in this game, in a pivotal role in this game for sure. And and there were some whispers. I think they were just very quiet whispers that the game could be called off today. We've mm. we've seen the pitch on the feed, Brendan. It does look like there's some puddles. It is very rainy in East Essex. Um, could that play into tonight? And, and hopefully we'll see one skid off a defender's head or something yeah. in, into into their goal, of course. Yeah, I think we've both said it's going to be a cagey tight affair and I think the pitch plays into that a little bit. And, and uh, like you say, it could just be a case of mistake because someone's slipping over in the rain or something that decides the difference between two sides who are desperate for form at the minute. Well, hopefully none of the slips will be happening to any Orient players. Hopefully it all falls in our favour and of course kickoff is very nearly upon us. So it's time to pass over to Dave Victor and Matt Hiscock. Nine, Harry Smith. 18, Darren Pratley. 
And welcome to the Job Serve Stadium for what is another genuine six-pointer. There are three points separating six teams at the wrong end of League Two, and there are only... Well, it is desperately close, isn't it, between the O's of Lake Norwich and the U's of Colchester United. Colchester have only won two of their last 15, and one of those victories, of course, against Lake Norwich in E10. The O's looking to bounce back after five straight defeats. They make three changes, one of those forced on them because of the suspension to Theo Archibald. We understand that Callum Riley and uh, Aaron Dryden have both gotten Knox Matt Hiscock. Hector Kiprianu on the bench as well for the O's this evening. He drops out. So three changes for the O's. And you made the point, Dave. Absolutely huge game. Or it may have more of these encounters to come. But if they can take anything out of tonight, it's clearly going to be a bonus for Matt Howard. We know that the O's are looking and searching far and wide for the next manager. As I say, anything tonight is a bonus. Well, it's uh, Matt Howard.